Good morning, School of Light. We're in Ezra, chapter 4. Good morning to you guys. When the enemy of Judah and Benjamin, oh, correction, let me start by saying if you want some Bible studies, we have them free of charge and they come to you in the mail. Doctrinally sound, really help you understand the Bible. <coughs> when the enemies of Judah and Benjamin heard that the exiles were building a temple for the Lord, the God of Israel, they came to Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel and the heads of the families and said, let us help you build because, like you, we seek your God and have been sacrificing to him since the time of Esarhaddon, king of Assyria, or Syria, who brought us here. But Zerubbabel, Yeshua, and the rest of the heads of the families of Israel answered, You have no part with us in this building of the temple to our God. We alone will build it for the Lord, the God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, commanded us. Hmm. Which is true. Then the peoples around them set out to discourage the people of Judah and make them afraid to go on building. They hired counselors to work against them and frustrate their plans during the entire reign of Cyrus, king of Persia, and down to the reign of Darius, king of Persia. At the beginning of the reign of King Xerxes, they lodged an accusation against the people of Judah and Jerusalem. In the days of Artaxerxes, Artaxerxes, king of Persia, Bishlam, Mithradath, Tabil, and the rest of his associates wrote a letter to, the, to Artaxerxes. The letter was written in Aramaic script in the Aramaic language. Rehum, the commanding officer, and Shimshai, the secretary, wrote a letter against Jerusalem to Artaxerxes, the king, as follows. <clears throat> Rehum, the commanding officer, and Shimshai, the secretary, together with the rest of their associates, the judges and officials over the men from Tripolis, Persia, Eric, and Babylon, the Elamites of Susa, <coughs> and the other people whom the great and honorable Ashurbanipal deported and settled in the city of Samaria and elsewhere in Trans Euphrates. This is the copy of the letter they sent to him to King Artaxerxes. Arta, Artaxerxes. From your servants, the men of Trans Euphrates, the king should show correction should know that the Jews who came up to us from you have gone to Jerusalem and are rebuilding that rebellious and wicked city. This is me off. <laughs> the way they talk with that. They are restoring the walls and repairing the foundations. Furthermore, the king should know that if this city is built and the walls are restored, no more taxes, tribute, or duty will be paid, and the royal revenues will suffer. Now, since we are under obligation to the palace, and not its, and it is not proper for us to see that the king is dishonored, we are sending this message to inform the king so that a search may be made in the archives of your predecessors. In these records, you'll find that this city is a rebellious city, troublesome to the kings and provinces, a place of rebellion from ancient times. That is why this city was destroyed. We inform the king that if this city is built and its walls are restored, you will be left with nothing in the trans Euphrates. The king sent this reply to Rehum, the commanding officer, Shimshai, the secretary, and the rest of the associates living in Samaria and elsewhere in the trans Euphrates. Greetings, the letter you send us has been read and translated in my presence. I issued an order and a search was made. And it was found that this city has a long history of revolt against kings and has been a place of rebellion and sedition. Jerusalem has had powerful kings ruling over the whole of trans Euphrates and tax, tribute, and duty were paid to them. Now issue an order to these men to stop the work so that this city will not be rebuilt until I so order. Be careful not to neglect this matter. Why let this threat grow to the detriment of royal interests? As soon as the copy of the letter in King Xerxes was read to Rehum and Shemshai, the secretary, and their associates, they went immediately to the Jews in Jerusalem and compelled them by force to stop. Thus, the work on the house of God in Jerusalem came to a standstill until the second year of the reign of Darius, king of Persia. <clears throat> so much. Oh, it's, 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 it's new. I mean, it's not new. But the whole... 
manipulating. You know, oh, hey, they, these guys are going to do this, and they said that, so stop them. And then they, it reminds me of uh, Mordecai and uh, Haman. You know, Mordecai was doing better than Haman. Haman was jealous. He conspires with other people saying, oh, let's go to the king and have uh, a law made that no one should bow down to anything. I mean, must bow down to the image of the king. But Mordecai wouldn't bow down to anything except for the Lord God. Knowing that, they issue this. They play the trumpet when he's supposed to kneel before this statue of a king. And Mordecai doesn't. <clears throat> and so... They had tried to kill Mordecai. Same stuff. We see it today. We see it in the United States, politics especially. Um, boy, I, I hate it. Instead of just being, letting people be free, letting people be, they're trying to control them. And I do not like that. God bless. Nibao studies, let me know. Bye.